Big Ten football. This is the arena in which the Golden Gophers celebrate the rites of fall. The pomp and pageantry bedecking the game is equaled only by the intensity of the play. It is on this stage that Minnesota, rich in gridiron tradition, savored golden moments with the Gophers. began on the sun-baked plains of Iowa State, where a fresh spirit was obvious in the encouragement offered by athletic director Rick Bay. In number 21, Blaze Bryant, the Cyclones featured the Big Eight's newcomer of the year. Bryant tested Minnesota, but ultimately, the relentless Gopher defenders extinguished the Blaze. State endured the indignity of five turnovers, the most crucial being this interception by Sean Lumpkin, which sucked the wind out of a cyclone rally. Anchored by Mike Sunbold, the defense rested. For coach John Gutekunst and quarterback Scott Schaffner, opening day jitters were put to rest quickly on a 50-yard completion to Chris Gators. touchdown of the season came on a Schaffner pass to Pat Tinglehoff, which gave the Gophers a lead they would not relinquish. For Schaffner, this was a day to remember. Scott passed for a career high 220 yards and two touchdowns, the most spectacular being this 54-yard gem to his high school teammate, Paul Hopewell. had a new offense with Darrell Thompson, the main man. The Cyclones knew all about Thompson. They tried unsuccessfully to recruit him, and Iowa State's loss became Minnesota's game. In this game, Thompson rushed for 106 yards and scored two touchdowns. native John Leverance, who had a game-high 13 tackles, this victory was truly a golden moment. In Darrell Thompson's four-year Minnesota career, no performance was as productive as that staged against Indiana State. With this first quarter TD, his 36th, Darrell broke the record of Marion Barber for career touchdowns. In the second period, Thompson broke another record with his 34th touchdown by rushing. And by halftime, he had gained 162 yards. In this game, Thompson carried the ball 37 times for 231 yards, both personal highs, while scoring three touchdowns. This epic performance made Darrell Thompson the Midwest Player of the Week. Homecoming was billed as a celebration of pride, 
and the Gophers treated the old grads to a royal time. Go! Purdue was the opponent in this gilt edged production, which began with a flourish. Chris Gators sped through the Boilermakers on a 64-yard punt return. With key blocks from Mark Drobzak and John Melander, Darrell Thompson inaugurated the celebration of pride. Saturday Night Live cult heroes Hans and Franz provided the inspiration as the Gophers proudly proclaimed to the loyal alumni, we want to pump you up. Thompson flexed his muscles on a 25-yard romp into Purdue territory. Enthusiasm surrendered to concern when Darrell sustained a sprained knee which forced him out of action. For Purdue, there was no escaping gopher pride. With Thompson down, Marcus Evans emerged and provided his personal golden moments. Evans pounded Purdue 32 times for 102 yards and a touchdown to give Minnesota a huge lift. Defense, too, was steaming with pride. In the first half, number 51, Bob Coughlin. And number 28, Eddie Miles, helped limit Purdue to a paltry 32 yards and three measly points. Once more, good fortune was supplanted by bad when linebacker John Leverance hobbled to the bench. Destined for greatness. That is how Gopher coaches perceive sophomore linebacker Joel Stats. An A student, Stats, number 55, made an immediate impact as Leverance's replacement. With Leverance and Thompson, a pair of marquee performers, both rendered hors de combat, the character of this squad faced a supreme challenge. Schaffner outflanked the Purdue defenders to launch a third period drive. The Gophers hit the jackpot when Schaffner passed to Jim King for 34 yard score. had a hot hand and was dealing nothing but aces. A 32-yard scoring strike to Shane Strain gave Minnesota an insurmountable margin. 6 Gophers to make the Big Ten all-academic team, Joel Stats put an exclamation point on a 24-carat performance with the Gophers' third interception. It was billed as a celebration of pride, and Markel Fleetwood gave the homecoming crowd another reason to be proud. With the Minnesota Rouser resounding throughout the Metrodome, homecoming became a memorable golden moment with the Gophers. The element of the unknown dominated the headlines when the Gophers traveled to Northwestern. The question of who would replace Darrell Thompson was answered quickly by Steve Rem. On just his second run from scrimmage, this 17-year-old freshman from Ocala, Florida, sprinted 55 yards to a touchdown, the Gophers' longest run of the season. While heroics were new to Rem, 
They were old shoe to Chris Gators, one of the Big Ten's best in kickoff and punt returns. Before the Cats could collar Chris, he reeled off a 60-yard run back. Pat Cummings applied the key block for Rick Myers' first touchdown, but the Gophers were not out of the woods. A fourth down run was stopped by Joel Stats, who stymied a Northwestern scoring threat. Late in the game, the Gophers trailed, but they drove into Wildcat country, won a pair of passes from Schaffner to Tinglehoff. With a minute 19 to go, Brent Berglund, the Gophers' outstanding special teams player, kicked a clutch, 43-yard field goal. Minnesota led, but this drama had one act remaining. With seven seconds to play, the potential game-winning field goal was tipped by Eddie Miles. To Minnesota's delight, it sailed wide to the right as the defense preserved a golden Gopher victory. The battle for Paul Bunyan's axe would be fought at the Metrodome. The axe was currently in possession of the Wisconsin Badgers. Coach John Gutekunst and his field general, Scott Schaffner, had some surprises up their sleeves. Chris Gators found a seam in the Badger secondary for a 25-yard gain. A reverse to Kevin Grant caught Wisconsin going the wrong way. And center Chris Thome escorted Grant to the one-yard line. Thompson turned the corner to score, and the Gophers had one hand on the axe. Goody spotted a flaw in the Badger pass defense, and the Gophers exploited it with a 48-yard Schaffner to Rem completion. The old football axiom, the best pass defense is a strong rush, proved true once more when number 79, Mike Sunbold, sacked the quarterback for a 13-yard loss. Minnesota recruited number 95, Anthony Bryant, out of Florida for exactly this reason. the fourth quarter, the Gophers had lost their grip on the axe, but not their resolve. Shane Strain was the picture of determination as he struggled to the Wisconsin 25. On third and long, Schaffner hit Gators, breaking free on a post pattern, and presto, touchdown, lead belonged to Minnesota. couldn't have delivered a more devastating blow to the Badgers than that administered by Ron Getz. Recruited as a running back, Getz ran like one as he returned an intercepted pass, 73 yards for the game-clinching touchdown. <laughs> Happiness is always a Minnesota victory. Mega happiness is returning the traveling trophy, Paul Bunyan's axe, to gold country. Sophomore quarterback Scott Schaffner, in his second year as a starter, gained confidence as the season progressed. Scott completed 53% of his passes for 1,373 yards and seven touchdowns. Freshman Markel Fleetwood, number 14, was a strong backup.
with a rocket arm and exceptionally quick feet. Fleetwood possesses superstar potential. At 6'2 and 200 pounds, Schaffner, one of the fastest players on the squad, led the Gophers in total offense with 1,498 yards. Together, Schaffner and Fleetwood give the Golden Gopher football future a double-barreled offensive threat. Senior flanker Chris Gators wore many different hats. His pass-catching prowess helped him earn a spot in the Blue-Gray game. Chris led the Gophers with 31 receptions. The most famous football pedigree on the squad belonged to Pat Tinglehoff, who had a team high 369 yards receiving. Tight end Shane Strain provided a big target. The newest Nova in the Golden Gopher Galaxy was number 48, Steve Rem. As a wide receiver, Rem utilized his blazing speed and jumping ability to both outrun and outleap defenders. Steve averaged more than 21 yards per reception. One fact is a certainty. Steve Rem will play somewhere. He's the type of problem coaches love. The most heartwarming success story among the 89 Gophers had to be number 28, Eddie Miles. He came to Minnesota as a Proposition 48 student, set out his freshman year, and hit the books. When eligible, he began hitting opponents and didn't stop until he won the Carl Eller Award as Minnesota's most valuable defensive player. Miles will join Coach Goody and Chris Gators in the Blue-Gray game. Getz, a four-letter winner, was one of four Gophers invited to participate in the Senior Bowl. As a linebacker, Getz left his imprint on many a ball carry. A big reason why linebacker may have been Minnesota's strongest position was the play of number 94, Max Stevens. Only injuries prevented John Leverance from realizing his All-America potential. Hard-hitting, hard-luck linebacker, Leverance still received a Senior Bowl invitation. In addition to his leg, Hunter Brent Purple also used his head. A pre-med student, Brent was honored to be named to the academic All-American team. The longest touchdown of the entire 1989 Big Ten season belonged to Minnesota's Fred Foggy, who returned an Indiana block field goal 98 yards. When Mike Sunbold sacked, forced an Ohio State fumble, Sean Lumpkin was off to the races on an 85-yard scoring return. This, too, was the Big Ten's best and a contributing factor to the Gophers leading the conference in fumble recoveries and interceptions. In the 107-year history of Minnesota football, no player basked in more golden moments with the Gophers than number 39, Darrell Thompson. A senior tailback from Rochester, Darrell rewrote the record book for Gopher running back. In all, 
Thompson owns 16 records. Among them are most yards gained rushing, 4,518, and most career touchdowns, 40. He was voted Minnesota's most valuable player. Until this season, Ohio State was the only Big Ten team against whom Darrell had not rushed for more than 100 yards. This year, he bruised the Buckeyes for 133 yards. No player in history rushed for more yardage against Michigan than did Darrell Thompson. Invited to every postseason All-Star game and destined for future stardom in the NFL, Darrell Thompson is hailed as the greatest running back in Minnesota football history. In the season finale at Iowa, Minnesota, in pursuit of a winning record, was a 10-point underdog. The Gophers came out of a shoot flying as Schaffner paired with Steve Rem on a 33-yard pass. A fourth down gamble paid off handsomely when Thompson passed to Gators for a touchdown. This was Darrell's second career pass, and both went for touchdowns. Iowa resorted to razzle-dazzle in an attempt to even the score. But this Hawkeye flea flicker was foiled by Fred Foggy, one of two interceptions he would make on this day. Minnesota dominated first half play, but the Gophers received a scare when Schaffner was tackled out of bounds and knocked out of action. En route to another 100-yard-plus day, Thompson rushed for 82 yards in the first half to face Minnesota to a stunning 13 to nothing advantage. Defensively, this was the Gophers' most glowing performance. Time after time, they stormed in to totally disrupt both the Hawkeyes' running and passing game. A deluge of fourth period points inundated Iowa. The Gophers began to go hog wild when Fleetwood scampered to a 23-yard touchdown. It was poetic justice that the coup de gras be administered by Eddie Miles, whose interception quickly became a touchdown. Minnesota celebrated a winning season with a smashing victory. The Floyd of Rosedale Trophy, that famous foreseen icon, would reside in Minnesota once more. The jubilant seniors went out as winners, and they would have a lifetime to fondly recall their golden moments with the Gophers.